Hi everybody, welcome back to Lori's Boston Found, where thrifted is the new black. My name is Lori, I'm a full-time reseller of Poshmark and on eBay. And today I have a really special video for you. Um, it's, it's a topic that I've talked about before and I've actually discussed this in other videos, but I wanted to give it its own standalone video. And that is my five strands for sourcing. The five things that I look for when I'm sourcing in a thrift store um, in order to make a decent profit on what I'm picking up for my resale business. Oftentimes when we are out at the thrift store, uh, we are forced to make a lot of decisions really quickly. Uh, we're looking at items, we're trying to decide if purchasing this item is going to bring us enough profit to make it worth buying. And sometimes it can be hard to decide what to take home and what not to take home, especially if this is something that is new to you. So I think this video is gonna be really helpful for new resellers as well as veterans because I think it's always good for us to check in with our strategies and what might be working for us and maybe something that perhaps we need to tweak. Um, so I hope that sounds interesting to you. If it does stick around, I'll be right back. are new here welcome I'm so happy that you found me and to all of my returning viewers thank you so much you all mean the world to me today's video is a standalone video for a topic that I discussed last year when I did my series um, from the store to your door and in that series I talked about the step-by-step -step process that I take to get my stuff from the time I purchase them at a thrift store to the time it gets shipped out to my customer who has purchased it. I often get asked about my process and it was too much to do in one single video. So I decided to do a playlist and I think I had five videos in that playlist. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely check that out. But in the first one, I touch on this and I also touched on it in my last video, but I think it's a subject that deserves its own space. So this is where we ended up. If you um, at any point in this video are finding any value, please feel free to hit the thumbs up button. It means so much to me and consider subscribing if you'd like to check out more of my content. I typically release two videos per week. What I decided to do for today's video is I'm going to go over my five strands of sourcing, the five things that I consider before I purchase a piece to list on Poshmark or eBay to sell for profit. And then I'm actually going to take you with me to Savers. I went yesterday. What I did was I gathered all the stuff and then I kind of just held things up and I'm going to do a voiceover and tell you why I decided to keep it or leave it. And then we're gonna end with a quick haul. I only picked up like 12 items, so it's gonna be super quick, um, but that's gonna be the format of this video. I will also leave timestamps below. If you wanna skip around, um, feel free to do that. So the first thing that I always consider when I'm purchasing an item is the price. I think this is something that we are always considering. Uh, when we look at something, is it worth X amount of dollars? And in some cases you'll see in my haul videos, I'll say, I will pick this up at the bins, but I wouldn't pick it up at a normal thrift store. And that's because the Goodwill outlet is a place where you pay by the pound and your cost is really low. So I may spend $1.50 on an Ann Taylor loft blouse, for example, that I know I might flip between $18 and $25, but I wouldn't pick it up at a thrift store that has it priced at $7 because the profit just wouldn't be worth it to me. Um, on the same token, I would pick up like say a Gucci bag for $40, which I had done before at an estate sale, knowing that I could flip that for over 200. So price in almost everything that we purchase has a lot to do with our decision making and everybody has a different budget what you're willing to invest in a piece is different from what I'm willing to invest in a piece and everybody else who does reselling. Some of us are volume sellers and we buy low cost and then we sell at a lower price, but we're also flipping things faster because we have a lower selling price and we're doing more volume. Then there are resellers who like to invest in pieces and maybe pay up a little bit when they're sourcing because they want to yield that higher profit margin. However, that could take a little bit longer to sell. Another thing to consider with price is that you may have like a sales goal or a listing goal in a month and maybe you want to list 100 items in the month. And if you're spending $5 per item, that's a $500 investment per month for your inventory. If you have half of that budget, you may need to reconsider how much you're spending on your items. And if you have double the budget, 
that's a different set of circumstances too. So price is always something to consider, which is why I have it as my number one thing is price. Actually, it's not necessarily in order for these items. They're just all things that I would consider. The second thing that I wanna talk about is comps. You'll hear us talk about comps a lot in the reseller community, and if you're new, what comps are are comparable prices to items that have already sold. So if I was selling this top, for example, and I looked up sold listings on eBay, on Poshmark, and I saw that the comps were about 20 to $25. Comps are never exactly the same number across the board. People let go of things for different prices for different reasons but they do give you a snapshot of like a ballpark or range of what you can expect to get for a selling price on a particular item if i look at the comps and i see that it is say 20 to 30 dollars and i'm only paying two to four dollars for an item then that might be a comp that indicates to me that this might be a good flip for me and maybe the market isn't saturated and it can flip pretty quickly. So I look at comps to determine whether or not a price that I'm paying for something is really worth it. Some people want to triple their money on a sale. So if they're not making a certain amount of money, the comps won't be for them. All of these things, while I consider all these steps or strands when I am sourcing, the interpretation of each one might be a little different for, for us. You know, Some people just might wanna make a 30% profit and they do a lot of retail arbitrage and they're not expecting triple the money. I should also mention in the comps category, you do wanna look at saturation. Even if there are good comps on a piece and it looks like it's going to be a good price for you to buy in, if the market is completely saturated, and by that I mean if you look up a particular brand and a style of an item and it has like 50 listings and you have a ton of competition, that's a market that might be saturated and even if the comps are good, it might take a while for your item to sell because it's a saturated piece. So you wanna consider that when you're looking at your comps. But I still think of comps as the overarching guide for the second strand. Number three, which I consider very important, especially as I get further along in my reselling career, is condition. I really consider the condition of pieces when I'm shopping more so than ever. I used to think that I could save every stray little article of clothing that I found. Sometimes I would be tempted to take things home that I could, you know, mend a button or stitch a seam. And for me, I've learned that those are things that I'm not really making time for. So if I see something, even if it's a good brand, I think I mentioned in my last video, I passed up on an Alice and Olivia blouse because it was missing buttons. Even though the rest of it was really nice, I didn't want to deal with two missing buttons in my listing. And also an Isabel Morant blouse that was really nice, but it had really excessive pilling. I feel like in the past, I would have been like, let me just take this home, let me try it. At the bins, I might've grabbed those items, but they were $5.99 at the particular store I was shopping at, so I left them behind because of the condition. So if you are somebody who loves to mend things and that's kind of your thing, this could be a place where you have more flexibility with condition. If you're a person that doesn't like to do anything, then condition has to be maybe excellent for you. I am somebody who's not afraid of a lot of stains. If I see a stain, I can usually get most stains out, um, or at least I'm willing to take a chance if other parts line up, like if the price is right and some of the other things that I'm talking about line up. But condition is something you definitely have to consider. And we all still make mistakes with condition. I would say on a monthly basis, I'm picking things up and then I get home and I'm looking at them under different lights and I say to myself, ah, I just, I just missed it. Sometimes I get excited if I hit a sale at a store or if I know I only have a certain amount of time to source before I need to like do something else in my day. That's when I feel like I make the mistakes with condition. I think condition is the one strand that I think is easily missed if you're in a hurry or if you're excited or you have bad lighting or things like that. I mean, price you're usually looking at, you can usually see what a brand is. That's another thing that I'm gonna talk about. Um, you can look up comps if you have time, although comps is another one if you're time crunched is something that for me, now that I've had experience, sometimes falls by the wayside. Because I've been doing this for a little bit, certain pieces I have a general idea of comps, but it's always good to look them up when you're sourcing. Okay, so we have price, 
we have comps, comparable sold listings, and we have condition. Those are three of the strands. Up next is brand. Uh, brand is something we're always looking for. People talk about bolo brands, like be on the lookout. You may have a history with certain brands that you know sell well for you. There are certain brands that I don't think any of us would pass up for the right price. But then there are brands that may sell well for you, but I struggle selling or vice versa. So once you get into a rhythm, you'll know the brands that work for you. But even if you're unsure of a brand, the other strands that I'm talking about will help you determine if something is a good pickup for you. So if you look at something, you're not sure about the brand, and then you run the comps, you might see that that brand is a great brand to pick up, even if you had never seen it before. On the flip side, you might see a brand that seems very familiar. I think one that a lot of us resellers are feeling the sting with right now is say, for example, Madewell. Everybody knows Madewell. There was a time where Madewell was a huge bolo brand and people would get super excited to find it. I still get a little excited if I see a nice Madewell piece. I still pick it up a lot, but I have to check the comps on Madewell now because it's a brand that has cooled off a little bit for me. There are certain styles of Madewell that I will always pick up, and that is the next thing I'm going to talk about. But even if it's a good brand, it doesn't always mean that it's going to have good resale value. So, but the brand is always something to consider. And it works both ways. I know people who do really well with Ann Taylor Loft, since I already mentioned that, and they'll pick it up time and time again. I know other people who have crossed that brand off their list and they're really not picking it up anymore. I'm curious if there's a brand for you um, with all things considered that you always pick up or a brand that you have completely stopped picking up. I tend to not do um, like bolo videos or things that I don't buy anymore because I find the second I say I'm not gonna pick something up, I'll see it and it will be a circumstance that the purchase is right for me and then I grab it. So I don't like to say that I'll never buy anything or that I'll always buy something because there are usually things like the things I'm talking about today to consider before I can say a blanket statement about any one brand. But brand is definitely important and brand does pull people in for example Veronica Beard is a brand that I have found a couple times and that is a brand that I really want to have in my closet because I think it is a brand that people are searching and even if I don't have the best Veronica Beard selection or Veronica Beard piece I like to draw people into my closet by having certain brands that I know people are gonna search. Same with like Good American. I picked up some Good American jeans, retail arbitrage. I have them priced a little high. They've been sitting. They're probably not gonna be the hugest profit for me, but it's a brand that I like to have in my closet so that people, when they search Good American, will stumble upon my closet and maybe that will lead to other purchases. So we've talked about price, we've talked about comps, condition, and brand. And the last thing I wanna talk about is style. And also under the style umbrella, I like to talk about the quality of a piece. So style is something that's really important. And you're going to see when I'm outsourcing um, that there are a couple pieces that the style was really cute but the brand wasn't there and the comps weren't there. So I, I would take into consideration brands that you see at like Target. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the label Wild Fable, but it's a really cute boho little style that Target sells. Super cute stuff, very trendy. If I find Wild Fable in good condition at the bins, I will pick it up because I can flip it for between like 15 and $20, depending on the piece. Wild Fable is not something that I would pick up at say savers that's going to have it marked at $5.99 or $6.99 because I know that it won't flip for that much and then my profit margin is just going to be that much smaller. But the style of these items can be really cute. When I think in terms of shoes, this just came to mind, not that these are huge bowler brands, but like Stuart Weitzman and Donald Pliner, I tend to find those when I'm out a lot. In fact, I did find a pair of Donald Pliner boots and a lot of times they can be marked up and they've, they're have brands that have been around for a while and they can do well. But for me, most of the time when I find Stuart Weitzman and Donald Pliner shoes, they're extremely dated. Like the style just isn't there. 
in my experience. Um, if I found a new Stuart Weitzman shoe or Donald Pliner and the price was right, I would probably grab it. But I tend to find those brands in particular, and those are just the first ones that came to mind. And they're very dated styles. So I often leave them behind because sometimes thrift stores will mark those items up because it's a brand that's been around and they recognize it as maybe a luxury or designer brand and they mark it up. Coach is another brand that gets marked up a ton. And for me, style is huge for coach. I am obsessed with vintage coach bags right now. The old style saddle bag, classic, just all suede on the in interior, vintage. I love that for coach. And I would pay up for some of those pieces. But the style of coach bags, like from the late 90s, early 2000s, like the signature bags, I'm not crazy about. The super bright colors, um, some of the poppy series I'll grab, but style for me when it comes to coach bags is really, really important. And it's really important for a lot of things. I also mentioned in one of my recent videos that for summertime, I enjoy picking up caftans. There are certain things that I won't pick up if the brand isn't there, but when it comes to caftans and cover-ups, if they're beautiful and floral and flowy, they seem like they're in really good condition, the style doesn't really matter to me. In fact, I did just pick one up and it sold in three days for $27, and I think I paid about $5 for it. When I first started, reselling, I put too much emphasis on style and not enough emphasis on condition and brand and comps and price. And I would just go shopping and if I saw something that I thought was cute, I would say, oh, well, I would buy this if I were at TJ Maxx. This is adorable. I'm gonna pick this up. I was putting way too much emphasis on style and not enough emphasis on some of the other things. So maybe it was a cute style and I picked it up at Savers and maybe it was $7, which, you know, is a little bit higher. My average cost of goods lands around $5. So even though the style was cute, it's been two and a half years and some of those items are still in my closet because it just didn't have a brand to back it up. The style didn't carry the piece enough. Another thing that I wanna mention with style is quality of pieces or um, like fabric content. So the first example that comes to mind for me is items that are made in Italy. I find a lot of items that are made in Italy that might be linen, um, or really good quality, fine merino wool or alpaca that you find like things made in Peru and they're made out of alpaca. I may not know the brand from a hole in the wall, but if the condition and the price is good, even if it's not a style that's a trending style, the fabric content pulls some weight. And I think of alpaca and linen and cashmere, those types of fabric will pull weight even if the style isn't fantastic. If the price is right, sometimes I will pick up those pieces. I do believe that people will search cashmere sweater and, it, and it's not necessarily that they're looking for a particular brand of cashmere, they just want a good cashmere piece that they can um, pick up for less than they would retail on a site like Poshmark. I think that quality and fabric content comes under the style umbrella. But those are the five things that I look for when I'm sourcing and I consider all of those things before I make a purchase. The home run pieces are the ones that we get for super low cost in beautiful condition, comps are amazing, the brand is good, and the style is current. Those are the ones that we always come back and talk about. Style doesn't have to be current. Sometimes it's a vintage style that will bring in some serious money. But when all five of these strands line up, those are like our dream sales. Nine times out of 10, you're going to purchase something that might have a few of these strands, but not all of them. Maybe the comps are decent, and the condition and the style and the brand is good, but maybe it's a little bit pricey. But you go for it anyways, because you know the other four strands are all strong. It's rare that you're gonna find all five things like strongly represented in each piece that you decide to buy, but you do wanna consider everything. All right, enough chatting. You've heard enough of me talking. Let's go to Savers. You're gonna see what I decide to pick up, what I decide to leave behind. All right, um, starting off with a brand, Echo, that I think is a pretty decent brand, but those red shoes were completely dated. Um, these are Fly London's, and Fly London is a brand that I've had some really great success with, but look at the price, $12.49. You guys are in for some serious sticker shock here at Savers. Um, I do end up getting these because the comps warrant even that price. 
All right, keeping in mind my five strands, this Harley Davidson shirt, they have priced at over $11, $11.49. That's a hard pass because of price, and I don't have the best luck with Harley Davidson pieces. I don't think I know enough about the brand to know which ones are super in demand. Um, it's also that time of year that now we're looking at t-shirts and things like that and that's never so exciting for me so i don't think i stumble upon anything over here that's exciting but you can see they have all of these t-shirts marked like 4.99 5.99 on a lot of these so most of these prices are not going to warrant um, a pickup i looked at this quickly because i thought it might be free people but the tag was missing kind of a cute style but with no brand in there i'm not gonna spend my time um, on that piece. I think I exit this area pretty quickly because I'm not finding anything. I'm gonna go back to the shoes real quick. Um, and I just want you to see my selection here. These are Calvin Klein's, I think, $14.99. And not a style that I'm spending a lot of time on. Heels and stuff. I have a lot of heels. Heels have been selling more than I thought. I could decipher this brand. I thought the heel of these shoes looked really cool. Um, but I think they're priced at $14.99 as well. And I end up passing on those. Let me know if that was a mistake. All right, heads up, I was looking really rough at the thrift store. I picked up this pink Floyd shirt. It was only $3.49 in a really big size. I think it was like a double XL or something. And I could probably fit, flip that between 20 and 25. Um, I really love the style of these pants and the condition were the condition was great. And look at the price, just $3.49. The brand is American Eagle. All right, this next piece I really wanted to get because I recently saw in the news that Golden Girls attire is making a comeback, like house coats. And I thought this pattern was really cute. And it was only $2.99, but there was really excessive pilling on that. So I decided to not take that, but I was disappointed. I wanted that. All right, here I'm looking at some vintage Victoria's Secret um, pajamas which I love they have the gold tag <laughs> somebody's coming by I'm chatting 349 again this was a definite pickup the condition wasn't like an A plus this guy was making me laugh I'm like do you mind being in my YouTube video he's like no not at all um, so I did end up getting those PJs this piece I was obsessed with this and I couldn't find any information I was made in Brazil it was in the robe section it was $11.99 this was my big gamble for the day because I did end up picking this up more on that piece during the haul. I actually forget to show you that striped robe during the haul because it was in the wash. I got it to the register, it had a stain, so they priced it at $4.99 and I was able to get the stain out. It's amazing. These are the almost famous overall joggers, also priced up, but new with tag. I did flat find a few comps on these that were $40, and that to me was enough of a profit. Almost Famous is definitely not a brand that I seek out to purchase, but I loved the style of these, and I found enough comps that I thought would warrant the price. Next up is this Nanette Lafleur dress. Um, I knew I wasn't going to grab this even when I picked it up to show you, but the price was $11.49. Remember, I still have 20% off, but I thought it was a little bit of a dated style. So price and style were working against it. This is Free People, also priced at $9.99, so it would have cost me eight at the register. I liked this, um, but I still thought it was a it was a tough style because it looked fitted and the slit was really high in the front. This is Moth brand, which is sold at Anthropology. Um, a little, uh, I don't know. I struggle with this color. Sometimes I struggle with Moth. Nine dollars for this, debatable. Um, probably would have picked it up for five, but I decided to leave it behind. Also because I have a ton of sweaters, so I have to kind of love the sweater right now. This is Lucky Brand, new with tag, $59.50. Lucky Brand is still one of my best sellers, $7.49. With the discount, it'd be about $6. I can probably get $30 for that, so I decided to get that one because of course condition, brand wasn't bad. Ooh, I was torn on these. If these were a size smaller, I would have bought them for Angie. They're Zara, they were $12.99, but I loved the style of these jeans. They were like slouchy, super high rise, and they were new with tag. 
The price was $39.99. I really struggle with basics from Zara. If this was like a kimono or a special piece, I would have grabbed it. But for this price, $13 for Zara, ugh. Left that behind. Um, you can see the challenges I have with my local savers and pricing. This is a Patagonia skirt. It's a chocolate brown. This was fresh off the rack. They just rolled this out. I think it's $6.49 or $6.99. Let me see, Patagonia. Um, I like brown. Brown, I feel like, is making a comeback. $6.99. I did end up picking that up. Truth be told, I was not very good about looking at comps while I was shopping. So this is a do as I say, not as I do. I was so disappointed about this. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, but Orla Keeley. Um, I looked at the comps on this. I just saw it on the rack and I think it was only $4.99, so the price was right. It had that random crossbody in it that I don't think it belonged to. <laughs> I'm excited because I see the shoe guy walk by, so I'm ready to like finish this up and run back over to shoes. Um, $4.99, the price is what right. It had a ton of dirtiness inside and I was pretty set on buying that, but when I reviewed it later, I noticed that the piping on the edges was really messed up, so I left it behind. These are gorgeous. Lewitt, never heard of this brand. $14.99, yes. Um, I bought these because I found a comp on these exact shoes for $115. Um, and I absolutely loved the style and the condition was really good. I love to pick up Haviana uh, flip-flops. How cute are these? I loved the tangerine orange slices. $8.49, just not the right price. I love picking these up and selling this brand. They retail for about $30, $35, but I left them behind. You know, I didn't even research these shoes. Um, I thought they were interesting and I grabbed them, but then I noticed that they were pretty damaged, so I didn't even run comps. Last up are these Donald Pliners, which I mentioned earlier. Um, this is not a bad style, but for $12.99, I have so many ankle boots. Um, I just thought that that price was too high and I decided to leave those behind. Um, <laughs> I really looked rough at the thrift store yesterday. The power of makeup is amazing. Anyways, I'm back and I just wanna go over quickly what I got in the haul and I'm gonna go through it pretty fast. On this particular sourcing trip, price was a real issue for me. As you could see, so many things were marked up that I had to put some things back solely for price because they were just priced so high. Now I did receive 20% off, um, but still with some of those prices, it just wasn't worth it. I ended up getting a few other things after I had my little haul with you in the store. So I'm gonna go through stuff really quickly. Some of the stuff you've already seen, so I'm gonna fly through it. This is the Lucky Brand shirt that I got. Um, another thing that came into play with this was that it is a size large, and I thought that that was great, new with tag. Um, kind of has that boho vibe that I like to have in my closet. So that was a good pickup. This was something I grabbed and probably should have looked at comps, um, but I loved the graphic for this. Um, it just says, Girls Supporting Girls. I'm probably only gonna get $25 for this, and this was marked at $7.49, so I did pay $6. It's not a huge profit, but it looks like it is brand new without tag. Um, it is a size large. I love the color, I love the message. I tend to do well with graphics like this. They don't really sell for a ton, but they usually sell pretty quickly. And I'm gonna try this on and maybe wear it for one of my videos, because I just love this message. Um, these American Eagle pants are really adorable. I think that these are very on trend right now and they're great for summer as well. Also something I consider when I'm shopping like that moth sweater that I left behind. If we were just going into winter, I may have picked that up even though it was a little on the pricier side, but it wasn't a style or a brand that was good enough to warrant it maybe sitting around for six to eight months. So that's why I passed on that. Um, but these for $3.49, they're in great condition. Oh, I also forgot to mention with these Victoria's Secret pajamas, I love the gold label and to find these for $3.49, I thought was so wonderful. I love the color. And the other thing is that these are 100% silk. A lot of the Victoria's Secret that I come across now is polyester and my savers kind of marks up Victoria's Secret. So I was surprised to find this entire set for $3.49. This is absolutely stunning. The, the biggest problem with this was probably condition because some of the buttons are a little bit loose, but the price was right. Gold Label Victoria's Secret, I consider a great brand. Um, the condition was Metza Metz. The comps, I didn't even look up. I've sold this stuff so many times. I'm guessing between $30 and $40 for this. 
and the style i think the style is one of the best parts i love this color it's a very current color love my neutrals just so pretty i kind of wish that was a large because i would have kept it all right i picked this up this is a lauren ralph lauren 100 cashmere short sleeved sweater within a crew neck very boxy the size is cut out um, but i'm estimating it's like a 2x and that is one of the reasons that i did grab it um, so this is where fabric content kind of trumped style $5.99 for 100 cashmere and i looked it up and down it's in excellent condition plus it being a larger size in really beautiful condition. I mean, after my 20%, this was just $4.80. If I get 30 to $40 back for this, I'll be really happy. And for that reason, I picked it up. But those are the boxes that it checked for me. The price was right, the fabric content was there, even though the brand isn't like a huge win. These are the almost famous overalls. There are probably a lot of you out there that wouldn't have paid $11.49. Because this was new with tag, that gave me a little bit of a green light to grab them. I think the style is really cute. I'm going to list these at $50 and I hope to get about $38 to $40 for those. Here is the Patagonia denim skirt. It's a cute little mini skirt. I love the color. Patagonia is a great brand. It's not always like a huge high high-end brand anymore. Some of my Patagonia has been sitting for a bit. This is their ironclad denim, 100% organic. This is a size six. I'm hoping to get somewhere between $28 and $35 for this skirt. It's also the season for skirts and skirts are just so easy to photograph. It's a really quick listing, doesn't take up much space in the inventory. I always like that. I grabbed this on my way out um, and I looked at comps really quick on eBay these are rose finials from pottery barn kids and this i have two they are new in box and they are like this beautiful rose color look at the detail on this these are just gorgeous how beautiful with like silver on the bottom here there was a single finial in lavender that sold for 24 dollars, and i have the set in pink new in box um, the crazy thing is the these were on sale at Pottery Barn Kids and they ended up selling for $5.99. Like that was the Pottery Barn price. Savers had them marked at $6.99, which meant I paid $1.40 less. Um, and the original price it looks like was $30, but I actually have these um, priced at $40 on eBay and on Poshmark because they don't make them anymore. So that I think increased the value. They weren't saturated, uh, which is another thing that I mentioned earlier. And the comps were good, a single one for $24. So I did the set for 40 and we'll see how we do. If they go somewhere between 30 and 40, that will still be a great return on $5 and 60 cents, I think is what I paid. These are the Fly London shoes. I'm hoping to get between 50 and $60 for these. Another reason why I was willing to pay up. I don't know if you can see it, but they're like this metallic, um, I don't know, like a silvery metallic color. And they are, in case anybody's interested, they are a size 30. And I will price these probably at $60 and see where we go. Open toe sandal, good for the season. These shoes I was just in love with. Um, I think they are so gorgeous. Uh, this was the most expensive thing because these were priced at $14.99. Um, and so even with my discount, that would be $3 off. I paid $12 for these, but I did find a sold comp for $115. There were, I would say like five to six of these already listed. Prices varied between like $60 new with tag to like $125 not new with tag. I priced mine at 90 and there were none that I saw at quick glance that were a size 39, which means that that's probably a good sign for these shoes. They photograph well, they are just beautiful. And then lastly, these I did not show in the haul. These are Kelsey Dagger shoes. Um, this was just one of those brands that's been swirling around in my head. I've never found Kelsey Dagger. These particular shoes were sold at Anthropology. I want to say that they are like new condition. You know, they still have like the little sticker on the bottom. Um, they're definitely, I have to mark them as pre-owned and I guess they have been worn because there's a little bit of creasing in the leather, but these mules are so nice. 
They retail for like 110, 120. I think I have mine priced at 75. Kelsey Dagger shoe comps I found to be a little bit all over the place, but it's a brand that I've never sold before. And I mentioned like the Veronica Beard example. I wanna see what kind of attention this brand might draw to my closet. Um, and I just thought these were a super classic style. And another piece, these are great like three season, I would say spring, summer, and fall, adorable shoes. This little mini wedge on the side, and these are a size seven if anybody's interested. Um, and those were priced at $10.49. Could you believe the prices on shoes at Savers? It is crazy time at that place, it's crazy. Honestly, the reason I shop there so frequently is because it is so close to my house. So when I need a quick thrift trip, um, sometimes I just need some new inventory. And also, as much as I love shopping at the bins, the bins are far away from me. I've done a lot of videos on my struggles at the new system at the bins where you have to really time it outright. I used to just show up at the bins and shop all day. Um, and I do have some local thrift stores around me, but this particular Savers is just so convenient for me. I don't think I'm going to visit anytime soon. Um, I'm gonna hold out for my next 50% off coupon because that's that's the best way to shop savers. And the way that they do it now post COVID is you get a coupon via email and then you get to use it on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You have five days to use your coupon and you can use it three times. So typically when I get one of those coupons, which I feel like is once every six weeks or so, they don't come out very often, but when they do come out, I'll try to hit my local savers and I'll go to another savers that's about 30 minutes away on two different days. And I really load up because 50% off um, is great. So that's my new strategy with savers. Um, that is all for today. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the five strands of sourcing. Is this like, well, duh, Lori, no kidding. <laughs> Those are the five strands. Or are there things that I missed? Am I overlooking something when I'm sourcing? Is there a strand that you think is the most important? Or do you think they're all kind of even keel? Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of my content. I will be in touch soon. My girlfriend Hope is coming in and we are so excited. We are going to be thrifting Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We're either gonna go live or we're gonna film a video together while we're shopping or here back at my house. We're not sure what we're gonna do, but we do wanna get some content out while we're together. Um, Hope and I will also be thrifting somewhere in Massachusetts that I will release later for my thrift across New England. So Hope's gonna be a special guest in that series, which will be coming out soon. So I just wanted to give you guys a preview of what's coming up and hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified when my videos come out. Thank you guys so much. I love you. Thanks for watching. Bye.